Oh, I see all my friends. Virginia. Hello from Charlottesville and Ontario, Toronto. Hi, Wendy. Hello, my friends. So good to see you. After a very nice weekend, I'm sure many of you enjoyed. It's always good to be with family on um, celebrations such as Easter. And so for those of you who don't celebrate Easter, it's still, it's really nice that it's a cultural thing for those who are not observant. And so um, hello, my friends. It's uh, Monday night. And this is what we do every Monday night, right? Eight o'clock Eastern time. <laughs> My name is Joette Calabrese and every Monday night at eight o'clock Eastern time, we are here together. We are gathered and we do one thing and one thing only. And that is we talk about homeopathy. <laughs> from stormy Oklahoma says Angela. Hello. Hello from Florida. It's so great to see everyone. I love to see us all gathering like this. If you don't already know, my name is Joette Calabrese. And for those who already know me, hello, my dear friends. It's great to see you every Monday for many years. We've been doing this for several years now. And so tonight, let us talk about sinus infections, shall we? Um, there are a number of medicines that we can use for sinus infections. So it, you know, I had to kind of really think what is the most common, what are those sinus infections that, that affect the most number of people, the sinus infections that are the most troublesome, etc. So, but I really went with the largest number of people. Um, I don't have numbers on that, but I do know that after having been in practice for these 35, 36 years and teaching all these years, um, I find that after a while it becomes pretty clear which are the medicines that are the most valuable for the largest number of people. Oh, hi Christy in the Florida Keys. <laughs> so you know how warm it is down here now. Lots of people from Florida. It's wonderful to see you all. Oklahoma and of course Canada. It's great to see everyone from Canada and Western Australia. Hi Tara. And um, yeah, we got a good number. And I'm going to ask you, friends, to please share and comment um, and like and subscribe in those areas that make sense to do so. We're on X and Facebook and uh, Rumble and YouTube. And we also have my wonderful Mighties with me tonight. I see you all gathered here. And the reason I ask you to do this is to like and share and subscribe is because it really does increase the algorithms and then that gets to a greater number of people. So, yes, much needed information, says Donna. My pregnant daughter is having a tough time shaking a sinus infection. All right. I would love to tell you first that sinus infections are always this medicine. This is what we use. Now, I will tell you that it's frequently frequent that we see specific medicines, but I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown, and I'm going to demonstrate it. I have actual props with me tonight to help you remember because I find that props really do help folks to remember how to choose these medicines. So my first choice, my first remedy is belladonna. Belladonna in English. Belladonna means beautiful woman. And in belladonna, belladonna, we often see an accompanying sore throat with the sinus infection. And the sore throat is pretty intense. And then the person wants to be bandaged. They want their head to be bandaged. So I'm going to bandage my head so that you remember this, to help you remember. They want pressure and bandaging, and not just a little bandage, but something really, really tight because the pain in the sinuses is so extreme. Whoopsie, you've got to have something tighter than that. So bandaging the head can really make a difference. It doesn't make it go away. What it does is it just relieves, just gives them a little comfort. So when we say better from or worse from, 
I want you to remember, my friends, that it doesn't mean that you're going to, that the sinus infection pain is better, like it's gone. It means there's a little improvement, enough improvement that it's noteworthy. So when there's a desire to press or to bandage the head, and especially if there is intense pain in the throat, and also if there happens to be a fever, it's belladonna. Belladonna 30 is the way I like to use it. Can we use it in a six? Certainly. Can we use it in a 200? My goodness, absolutely. But I really think 30 is one of our best choices. And then the belladonna is the medicine we often use at the onset, when it first starts coming on, because there's a fever often, or the person is hot and they want pressure so badly, and there is pain. There's pain, maxillary pain as well, which is the upper sinuses all up in here and across the across, above the mouth or yes above the mouth and um, there can also be a cough which is kind of a short dry cough associated with this and then we would use it say in the 30th potency and maybe every 15 minutes for the first hour and after that maybe every few hours as soon as the medicine begins to act what do we do my friends what do we do when the medicine we're talking about an acute now these are not chronic these are acutes, okay? In an acute situation, we can increase the frequency of the use of the medicines, such as every 15 minutes for the first hour, and then less frequently as the improvement ensues. And so we can repeat it a few times, um, and then we can, um, a- until it gets a- enough improved where you can say, okay, I think we can really space this out, okay? Yes. At the onset, it's one of our best for at the onset. Pain pressure relieves the intensity, or at least they find themselves wanting to do it. It may not relieve anything, but they they find themselves pressing or they want their head wrapped up in a bandage. Belladonna. That's how we. That's one of our first ones to think about at the onset of a sinus infection. Now another one that I love, and this is a Banerjee protocol, they use Sanguinaria, Sanguinaria 200C mixed with Belladonna 6. They mix them together. And they only use the Belladonna if there's pain. Not all sinus infections are accompanied by pain, my friends. For those of you who only suffer sinus infections accompanied by pain. You may not imagine how it could be, but sinus infections can be without pain. So if, san- if, if there is no pain, we would use Sanguinaria 200C all by itself, but if there is also pain and or si- sore throat and, 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 and that pressure, wanting that pressure, and it's the onset, Sanguinaria 200 mixed with Belladonna 6 is an excellent choice. It's one of our top remedies for sinus infections. So if there is no headache, you can use plain old sanguinaria all by itself. Now, I find that sanguinaria infections that require sanguinaria are often people, not always, but are often people who have sinus issues in general. They have chronic sinus issues. So they have allergies or they, they have postnasal drip or that kind of thing. And then when they get sick and it comes to a culmination, comes to a head, that's when they get an infection where it's now that's got them down. Now they are down for the count. Okay, next one. The next one is pulsatilla. And pulsatilla loves being fanned. They like fresh air or they want to be fanned. It doesn't have to be this old fashioned fan, but it can be a fan from the, from the, from the window unit. It can be a fan from the, just the air blowing into the room. They feel more comfortable if they are fanned. That is pulsatilla. They want the air. They need the air. It helps them breathe better. It doesn't maybe take the pain away, but it does help them breathe better. But also, they have a loss <laughs> of smell. I've got a clothespin here. They have a loss of smell. I know this is ridiculous, but I'm being ridiculous for a reason. I'm being silly because I want you to remember this. So pulsatilla, loss of smell, wanting to be fanned. <laughs> I do sound very sinus, don't I? Sinusy. 
It will help you remember, if you think of these little implements that help you remember these kinds of things, there can be, it doesn't have to be a loss of smell, but if there is a loss of smell and we have the, the desire for fresh air, for air blowing on the person, and here's another part of pulsatilla, there is a yellow or greenish mucus. Very useful, very useful information. This is how we differentiate between one medicine and another. So you can see, not all sinus infections act in the same fashion. So, all right, so now, now let's get to my, my personal favorite, <laughs> which is Kelly Bichromium. Now, the reason I say it's my personal favorite is because I actually had a chronic condition that every time, for many of you already know the story, I've told it so many times in my classes and in the academy and in the gateway class, I believe, and many other uh, uh, forms. But I had a, a chronic sinus pain. It was not, they were not infections. They were simply pain. Pain across the top of my forehead, under my eyes, especially at the root of my nose. It was excruciating, and I would get it every time there was a barometric pressure shift. So think, I should have brought, a, I have a barometer somewhere, I should have brought that. If there's a barometric pressure shift, and many people don't even realize that there's a barometric pressure shift, unless somebody said this to them and now they're associating it. So a barometric pressure shift means that this pain, this is all very painful in here. It can often start at the root of the nose. Whether it is a chronic condition, such as what I used to suffer, or a, an acute um, uh, infection. So if the, this is one of the indicators, is if you drop something, I'm gonna drop my clothespin, and you have to go pick it up. And upon picking it up, on the way up, oh my gosh, the pain is horrendous. So just bending down, picking up something from the floor is excruciating. That is often an indication for the need for Kelly, of the need for Kelly bichromium. Kelly or Kellium bichromium, Kelly bichromium. And let me say, I used it in, as I recall, it was a 30th potency. Now, mine was chronic. As I said, I lived in Buffalo, New York, where on the Great Lakes, not too far from Niagara Falls. And I have to tell you, <laughs> there was a barometric pressure change <laughs> twice a month. And so I would suffer from these tremendous head pains every month twice for a few days. It was horrible. I was taking terrible drugs in order to relieve that pain. 222s, as they were called. They were, you couldn't even buy them in the U.S. I used to have to go over the bridge to Canada and go buy those drugs. They had codeine in them. The pain was so extreme until I finally learned homeopathically to use Kelly Bichromium and the first dose uh, well, it wasn't the first dose. It took a second dose, as I recall, and I had to stack them up together and take a couple doses. And it took not only took away the pain at that moment in time, but it didn't come back again. I had a, another sinus pain about three, four weeks later when the next barometric pressure change came in, but it was a lower level. It was, wasn't as intense. I took the Kelly Bichromium again, and that was in about 1989, 1990, something like that. And I've never had one of those headaches again. Now, I tell you this story because it's memorable with that Kelly Bic or Kelly Bichromium. I tell you because I want you to remember it, but it's not necessarily the way this always works. There are times when we see gobsmacking results, results that are so astonishing that we can't possibly wrap our heads around the idea that those little pills could do something so remarkable as this. But it can happen like that. And so I want you to remember Kelly Bichromium, not only for the pain across the side, across the eyebrows, above the eyebrows, starting perhaps sometimes at the root of the nose, or starting on the left side, and the pain is unbelievably painful. I mean, you can do nothing. And it's worse for picking up a clothespin off the floor. Just get putting your head down and coming back up, or even on the way down, the pain is excruciating. Kelly Bichromium, whether it's an infection or it's a chronic condition, it is often Kelly Bichromium. 
And there's one more aspect. There are several more aspects to this medicine. But there's often mucus that's post-nasal. It can be plasticine, meaning kind of ropey and thick and stubborn and incalcitrant and unable to be drawn up. I had none of that. All I had was the pain, barometric pressure change, and the pain was extraordinary. So if there's ropey music, uh, mu uh, mucus, and it is a, uh, it's especially a post-nasal drip, and the pain is horrible, and it's all in the sinuses, and you also have a barometric pressure change that might come in to make it worse, worse on getting down and coming back up again, you have a dead ringer, my friends, for Kelly by Chromium 30. And if it's an acute, such as a infection, by Chromium 30, Kelly by Chromium 30 every 15 minutes for the first hour, after that every few hours. Now, that's just one way to do it. I'm going to tell you that in many of my teachings, I did not teach every 15 minutes. I taught every three hours. But what I found was many people would not get to the crux of the issue fast enough and give up. So I decided to double up, to step it up, so to speak, not double up, but to step it up. And by doing that, what I found was that within, after those four doses, three or four doses within that um, our period of time, there's often a shift that's remarkable enough that now the person can back off and, and cut out the use of the medicine or go back to it only when it's absolutely necessary. Okay? <laughs> All right. Let's get some questions in, and then I'll get to a couple more remedies. Um, can't get the mucus out. Could be. That's certainly man-wished... Um, I knew this years ago uh, when my sinuses were that bad when I would bend over. Oh, my gosh, it's so awful. Sinus pain can be quite extraordinary. Um, let's see. I had uh, sinus surgery to drain impacted sinuses, but even that didn't clear up my sinuses. Homeopathy handles my symptoms neatly. This is what's interesting, Tina. I love the way you said this. I had sinus surgery to drain impacted sinuses, but even that... Um, and I know what you're saying. What you're saying is even having gone to those extraordinary uh, uh, situation of having to be put under anesthesia and having to take antibiotics and having to be under the knife, all of that didn't touch it. But, oh, this little sweet little remedy that costs about $12 did it. <laughs> yeah, because homeopathy is often, not always, my friends, but often the answer. Okay. We visual love, uh, learners are loving this. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I will have to do more of this. <laughs> yes. Um, you bet. Okay, now let's go to the next one, shall we? Okay, that was Kelly by Chromium. So now, so far, what do we have in our arsenal? We've got Belladonna. We've got, and Belladonna often is accompanied by fever. So remember that. That can also be a big part of it. Belladonna. Sanguinaria, Sanguinaria mixed with Belladonna, Pulsatilla, and Kelly Bichromium. Now let's talk about silica. Silica, S-I-L-I-C-A, or sometimes it's spelled S-I-L-I-C-E-A, silicea, because of it's English or it's Latin, and we interchange them. It works in many ways. In, in, bo in both ways, same, same, same medicine, okay? Now, silica is a medicine that can be used for an acute sinus infection, but let me also tell you that it often shows up in someone who has had chronic infections or they have chronic sinus issues, and it's sinus, 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 then, oh, sinus infection, Sinus, 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 or sinusitis, or whatever, however you want to describe this, it is a medicine for when there is a, often a chronic condition. It's also a medicine for someone who faints after getting this, if you know what I mean. People who faint after these kinds of things often are, and, and they have sinus issues, are often in need of silica. What potency? Six is fine, 30 is good, even 200. But I tend to find that uh, 30 is a very good place to start. And the pain is over the right eye. Kelly bichromium is more often over the left eye or the middle of the eyebrows, but silica. <laughs> over the right eye. 
more often than not. Now, it doesn't mean that we never see it go anywhere else, but it should be predominantly on the right side or it started on the right side, okay? So that's the way I want you to remember this. The nasal ch discharge forms crusts, and the way you remember that is silica is crystallized. It's glass. It's sand. And so when you think of, there are hard crusts in the nose. And so that is, that, that trying to remove them can cause bleeding. And, we're, and people often think, look what I've done. Look what I've done to myself. I've got to stop doing something. It's such a bad habit. No, no, no. My friends, the, when you re remove debris from inside the nose, it should not bleed. If it does, and they're hard crusts, and we have over the right eye, and <laughs> we add these all up so that silica starts to really fit the picture, then, my friends, silica can often be the medicine. Now, I'm going to bend down because I don't have a Kelly bichromium headache. And I'm going to get my clothespin because silica also has a loss of smell. They cannot pick up on the sense of smell. And a lot of times, people imagine that the problem is that there's a lot of mucus all stuffed inside the sinuses. But to be honest, I mean, that can be. But more often than not, we find that the, the sinuses are swollen and inside. That's why it feels like it's, like it's stuffed up, so to speak. So there's a loss of smell. There's a loss of taste with silica as well. Let's see if I've got anything else. Nasal blockage. That same, that same sound, that nasal blockage. Is the nasal blockage, again, is it mucus? We don't know. Sometimes people say, well, I blow and I blow and I blow and nothing comes. It must be really high up in there. Well, it could be, but my friends, it is often because it is swollen. That's what these kinds of things do to the sinuses. All right. How are we doing with time? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I never knew silica was good for that. I always learned something new listening to Joanne. I'm so glad to hear that, Irene. Uh, Pulsatilla, 30. Yep. Silica for dry, crusty, nasal mucus. Dry, yes, dry, crusty. Remember, silica is sand. Sand is, is dry and crusty, and if it gets on your feet after you've walked on the beach, it's dry and crusty, and, it, and it, you have to push to, to get it off of you. You have to or wash it off. It's not oily. It's not liquidy. It's dry and crusty. All righty. Next medicine. <laughs> Let's go to hydrastis. Now, what I love about hydrastis, my friends, is that this is also a great allergy medicine, as is silica, as is pulse. Many of these medicines can be used for allergies in general, um, for chronic conditions, not belladonna so much. <clears throat> but hydrastis, this medicine is prepared from golden seal. For those of you who come to me, come before us with a botanical understanding having studied herbs. That's where I came. Before I came to homeopathy, I was studying herbs for years. And hydrastis is golden seal. And we think of golden seal, as an herbalist, we think of it as something to protect against infection. Now, don't think of hydrastis homeopathically in that fashion. You can use the herb in that fashion, but when we use it homeopathically, we really want the symptoms to line up. All righty? All right, so there is a post-nasal discharge. There's no doubt about it. And the, and the sinuses, the mucus is thick and mostly yellow, not unlike pulsatilla. Remember, pulsatilla has yellow as well, but they want fanning. Hydrastis is a little different. It's thick and yellow and doesn't care to be fanned. That's not part of this picture. Um, there's burning pain in the nose. Oh, you're not going to believe what I'm going to do here. Indeed, there is burning pain in the nose. Burning pain in the nose. Hydrastis. And in the throat. Burning pain. And it's a burning sensation may attend all of its indications. So the burning pain could be across the, the, the forehead. This is far enough away for me to be, un, to be I'm, I'm safe. 
across the forehead, but it's really in the nose that there's burning pain with hydrastis and burning pain in the throat. So this is how you're going to remember hydrastis. Belladonna is hot with a fever. Hydrastis is burning. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah, I am being careful. I know. I, I use this thing all the time. <laughs> you know, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Julia Child used to say that every woman should own a blowtorch. And I agree. <laughs> she was using it to crisp up her creme brulee. I say we need to use it for, for as a prop, but also um, because uh, we need to burn a hole in the old ways because it's really interesting that I'm reading what you're saying, that all of you, like me, used to use drugs, drugs, synthetic drugs of commerce. Yes, my friends. Synthetic drugs of commerce is what we've all used, and we have had it with those. <laughs> all right, I've got one more, one more medicine. There are many more, my friends. There really are many more. But um, I've got one more, and I thought I had this right here, but I don't have it, and that is Natrum Muriaticum, or Natmur, known to be salt. That is what, from what it is made. And so it is for sinus infections and nasal allergies. So if someone is prone to nasal allergies, sinusitis, rhinitis, sinusitis right here, rhinitis in the nose. If we see that that's a pretty common thing, that this person is really suffering from these, this, these allergies, and they also have headaches, not necessarily just with the sinus infection, but other times as well. Then, my friends, we're going to consider Natmur. Now, there are aspects of Natmur in which they find that they're often thirsty or that they love salt or they hate salt so it's either one extreme or the other they love salt or they hate salt and so yeah hydrastis every one of these we can pretty much use in a 30 or a 200 my friends so just know that that's we're going to use it pretty much in the same way nat mure for allergies especially if there's a salt mm -hmm. indicated on some level saltiness and um and the discharge from the nose is watery it's watery it's not thick and yellow like pulsatilla. It's not burning. It's not uh, 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 plasticine. It's not thick or ropey. It's not incalcitrant. No, it is runny, watery and runny. Um, so runny that sometimes people put a Kleenex up into their nose be just to hold it from constantly running all of the time. Now, I like this medicine. This one's a little different. I like Nat Mure in a 6X. I think it's excellent in a 6X. Now, it doesn't mean that Nat Mure can't be used in a 200 or a 30, but for this, for sinus infection, I think a 6X is excellent. And I also am going to tell you that I often get the 6X of Nat Mure get a dose of it, four to five pills, put it in water, wait for it to dissolve, stir it once. How much water? Well, what would you say this is? A few ounces, right? Three ounces perhaps? Wait for it to dissolve, leave it in the water, and then take a sip every 15 minutes for the first hour. All righty. Um, oh, well, let's see what else we've got here. I've got one more that I'm going to mention because I have a few minutes. I have two minutes left, and, I, and I'll see if I can answer a couple of questions. There's one more. There are many more. There are many more medicines that we can consider. But I wanted to bring this up because I think it's fascinating because if this hits someone, if someone says, oh, my gosh, this is me, it can really help you. And that is if there are um, polyps, nasal polyps, whether they've been removed or there used to be polyps because they've been removed, but now there's this problem with sinus infections that are complicated because of the polyps. And oftentimes the ENT will tell the person, well, the reason you have an infection is because you have polyps. Well, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that, but what I would agree with is that if there are polyps, we're going to use Lemna minor, L-E-M-N-A minor, 
like the opposite of major. So lemna minor. But this one's different, my friends. Instead of taking it in a homeopathic formula, I love lemna minor in a mother tincture. We're going right back now to our botanical story before. So mother tincture means that it's in alcohol. You can purchase it for online. There are many places I like. Um, let me think now. Somebody's got, I know you folks are going to come up with the great places for to purchase this. Um, let's see if somebody's saying it, giving us any information. We've got um, Herb Farm. Herb and then Farm, P-H-A-R-M. Gaia, G-A-I-A. Yes, thank you very much, Shelly. Gaia is a good one. Uh, we always have to be careful. These, these uh, manufacturers started out really great, and then they end up selling, and then that's how things go downhill. So be careful and watch carefully, making sure that these people were going to hold their feet to the fire, make sure that they're using organic or wildcrafted, etc. So with Lemna Minor, we put it in... A few drops, maybe six, seven, ten drops of that into a little bit of water, and then take sips of that again okay. every 15 minutes for the first hour. Um, yeah, make your own if possible. Absolutely, says Deb. Very smart to do that. Make your own when possible. It's what I spent a lot of time doing before I found homeopathy. Helios has it, yes. Yep, herb farm people are saying yes. Thank you for sharing that. Somebody asked about. Uh, Lemna Minor was the last one. Um, people are writing down the name so you don't have to worry about um, getting this information. And you know this will be up again tomorrow, and then you'll be able to watch it at any time after that. And please share and comment and subscribe where, where, where it's useful. Um, and share this with your friends, my, my dears. This is really important. Um, Tina's saying Reckowig. I like Reckowig. That is a pharmacy that um, that is a manufacturing pharmacy out of Germany. Um, so Reckowig, I'm just we're naming some of the pharmacies that have some of these remedies. Certainly Boron, uh, Washington Homeopathic, OHM. If you happen to be a student or a client of mine, um, Hahnemann Pharmacy. Yes, my dears, this is. Um, um, there, there are some wonderful pharmacies that we can count on. Helios in England. What if the nose plugs up at night? Hard to breathe through it. Hi, Paula. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, what we're saying, what if the nose is plugging at night and it's not an infection, now we're talking about something that is a reaction. It's an inflammatory reaction that probably has something to do with allergies. And um, But if all it is, if, if, if it's just a short term, infection, meaning that it has a natural beginning and will have a natural ending, then you want to try to figure out anything else that fits this. Is there a desire for a fanning? Is there a desire to be bandaged? Is there a stuffed up nose? Now I did talk about that, remember that stuffed up nose? Or a loss of smell? Is there pain about between the eyes, over the le right eye, over the left eye? That's where you're going to, you need a little more than just stuffed up at night, unless we're talking about allergies. And then it makes it slightly easier. All right, my friends, we've gone over. This has been wonderful. Love seeing you all. God bless you. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye. With our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. My family. A needs a me, so I must know our remedies. How much to take, how often to treat, and when to stop, and when to repeat. With our homeopathic protocols, you learn your remedies. Athusa no dairy, it's elementary with arnica head, arsenica feds, pajilia slither, orms from wither, no more. My family, a needs a me, so I improve my memory. Not only the REMS, but how often to treat, and when to stop, and when to repeat. With your homeopathic protocols, a learner your remedies. Bellus so red and arnica head, drosera bark, ignatia dark, source of frigid and cuprum to rigid, and crude itches, tally capronicum, let it melt on your gum, both to eat are some great ways to treat ya. La 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 la, homeopathic protocols, a learner your remedies.